Hello again, and welcome to Forum for a Better Understanding. It's been a privilege to be hosting and helping to produce this program for the last five years, and we have had many, many interesting programs. So far, 250. But today, we actually have a panel and a topic that we've never quite, quite had before. It's called the Interfaith Social Justice Collaborative. And why this makes a perfect forum setting is the people do come from different traditions, different churches, different faiths, but they have decided since 2005 to form an active group of people who in different faith traditions will be committed to very important causes that many of us would find common ground on. The three guests that are here today are not the only persons in the steering committee, but they are three representatives who actually could be free today to help make the program. My first guest is Helen Saporin, a member of Mental Health America Central Valley and United Advocates for Children and Families. She's a very active member at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno and has been on in other settings on this program, usually talking about mental health and the connections that the interfaith community can work with in that, in that area. To her side is a new friend, Katie Clark, who is a follower of Jesus and a physical therapist, and from what I hear, the newest member of this steering committee at the Interfaith Social Justice Collaborative. We're very glad you're here, Katie, you. to have you on the panel for the first time. Thank you. Across from me is um, Dr. Susan Gale Orovitz, who is a licensed clinical psychologist, steeped in Buddhism and contemporary and especially contemplative Judaism, and has been on programs before talking about the power of uh, Dr. Finley and his approach to therapy and to mental health and to the idea of how it is faith and also clear insights into spirituality can be a very positive force of uh, mental health and goodness and just general happiness in life. We're here today to find out things that impact all of us in our spirituality, but also in our practical daily concerns of this planet. I wonder if we could begin with um, Helen telling us just something about yourself as it is that this topic of the Interfaith Social Justice Collaborative makes sense to you as a person. Mm. Um, Jim, I joined the organization when we started it. I was one of the founding members and um, <clears throat> have always had an interest in social justice and also um, have had that interest in mental health because I have many family members with mental illness and myself suffered depression. And somehow those two things came together when we initially started our group and we talked about social justice interests we were involved in or interested in. Mental health was one for me in particular. That's great. Katie, what is it that brought you to join this group, and where do you see your, your best connection with this interfaith collaborative? I actually have a quote, and it's from the movie that we'll be talking about later. Great. But the quote is, the hardest thing about taking action is sometimes just taking the first step. And that's by the director of a, an organization, organization called Green Faith. And I think that's um, something that's very powerful to me is um, I also have been involved in my own way in social justice, but this was a way to meet with other people and um, hear about what other churches and what other faiths are doing and come together and, and do something, I think. And I think that's what's so wonderful about this is that we are doing something. We, are, we, are, we talk about things, but we also act upon them. That is a major difference in a lot of groups. There's a lot of groups out there, and it's very great to think that in the few years you've been up and running, there have been major events. Mm -hmm. I've been at some of them, and there's been many I've heard of, and then there's things today we're going to talk about that I'm going to say, gee, I missed that one completely, <laughs> but congratulations. <laughs> Susan, tell us a little bit about yourself and how it is that you see this as very much a part of your life. Well... Um, what brought me to the Interfaith Social Justice Collaborative is I asked uh, several years ago to come to the steering committee because I wanted to talk to them about interfaith dialogue, especially Jews, Muslims, and Christians. And um, basically, I got roped into being part of the steering committee, and I'm really glad. One of the things I really like about being on the steering committee is that we meet and we take care of something, we get something done, we sponsor something, we put something on, and we work really well, like we divvy up the tasks 
and everybody does their own thing and it comes together. And so there's not a lot of wasted time. It's very task oriented even though we all get along really well. It's very respectful. And so um, to me, that's my community now. That's great. Mm -hmm. Helen, this topic of faith and mental health, for some people they, they don't seem to Im immediately become a pair, but for you they are. Can you unpack faith and mental health and help us appreciate your own commitment to it, but also why these two things need to be not just for you, but for all of us better connected? I was raised <clears throat> in a Jewish family and practiced my religion. Um, when I married 26 years ago, I, I became acquainted with the Japanese Buddhist community. And um, as developing a family, we've joined the Unitarian Church. I've now had a lot of experience in my years yeah. with three different faiths, but looking for the commonalities in them. And, and from my own experience, what I remember is that at any service in which there was prayer, uh, I felt a great deal of comfort. And that was soothing to me with my own experience with depression. I found that uh, studying Hebrew and learning to chant the prayers was a comfort that I had never had before. And as I began to be aware that spirituality and faith does put us in a place of calm and peace um, and hope that maybe others were feeling some of the same things. And you know how things come together yeah. when you're kind of open to it and you're experiencing <laughs> it, you start then hearing then more in the community. And I discovered um, through watching a video uh, called Shadow Voices, which was published by the Mennonite Media uh, Company. And it was for, let's see, they did it for the uh, National Council of Churches. This was a documentary on mental illness and a wide variety uh, of various approaches to mental illness. But in particular, what struck me at the very end of this video was an interview with a minister, Susan Greg Schroeder, who runs Mental Health Ministries in San Diego. And this is one of actually the videos that she produces out of mental health ministries. And she spoke about, she had had a very severe depression and was hospitalized um, during the time that she had a ministry, was a uh, <clears throat> minister of a large congregation in San Diego. She spoke about her faith and spirituality and how that helped her through this time of illness. And her entire ministry now is devoted to bringing these two, faith and mental health, together. That's how I even got the idea of maybe we can do something here in Fresno and propose that idea to our um, Interfaith Social Justice Collaborative. And they said, yeah, let's That's go great. for it. That's great. Now, Katie, your part today especially mm -hmm. is to talk about something not that's happened yet, we're going to come back and even have Susan give us some things about events that have happened that have been great successes. But there's something we want to get on the, in people's view right away yes. about this film. Yes. Do you want to start introducing renewal to us and then we'll start showing pictures, we'll sure. start showing where to go to Hope Lutheran for the, for the film. Start telling sure. us about the film. It kind of, it, it's an event that um, the Interface Social Justice Collaborative is putting on. It's the day after Earth Day. And um, it's a beautiful documentary depicting um, people of faith that are standing up for the environment. Um, it's, I think, six or seven different vignettes of um, different faith communities that are all doing different things to promote social justice and also um, envir the environment, um, helping the environment. One thing that we should let people know is it's going to be in town. It's going to be at Hope Lutheran Church yes. on the 23rd of um, April. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Tell us a little bit about what we want to know from this poster here. What we want to know. It's at 7 o'clock. That's the key. The film starts at 7 o'clock. You can come earlier, bring food. There will be some light refreshments there. Um, 7 o'clock is when the movie will actually start. It's about 90 minutes long. And like I said, it is, is broken up into um, six or seven different vignettes um, that are all um, different faith groups 
doing different things for the environment. So one of the vignettes is about um, a Jewish camp that's back in um, Connecticut well, we've, area. We've got some pictures. Oh, okay. uh, why don't we put Wonderful. up, um, Greg, if you could put some of the pictures and maybe some of these vignettes will sure. help us appreciate. Uh, that's one of the vignettes. Yes. It's showing a lot of different people. And the, well, the other uh, this thing. would be the other, the other pictures, which would be the ones from Renewal. Yes. So there we yeah. are. This is actually a group, um, a Muslim group, that um, they have organized, um, they've had a relationship with a farmer back, I believe it's in New Jersey, and they, they get, um, get fresh, organic, humanely raised meat from this farmer, and especially during their, their holy season of Ramadan, and they're able to get this meat and then provide it to people who may not be able to afford nice. the meat. Um, but what's wonderful about it is that it is hum humanely raised and it's organic meat. So it's like halal. Exactly. Which is it's exactly, we've had programs on halal, mm -hmm. which explain, it's sort of like kosher for Muslims. Exactly. And really important that, so that's one element is already something that's ritualistic, but mm -hmm. also healthy and also very much part of one's faith. Exactly. These are serious Muslim believers. Exactly. What's another group maybe? Oh, there's your Jewish this, yes, camp. Yes, <laughs> this is a camp back in, um, I believe it's in Connecticut. Yes. And these kids, um, there are kids that are brought in from the city and they're learning about where their food comes from, what happens to the food that they don't eat on their plate. I mean, it's amazing. One of the things that's mm -hmm. very striking in the film is everybody you know, eats their food at a meal and then whatever's left over, they have to pour in a bucket. And they're looking at all the waste, pretty oh much. And that's something that we don't think about. No, we um, just throw it away. Exactly. Yeah. We just throw it away. And um, it's pretty much getting kids to connect the environment with God and the fact that God created this earth for us and we have to take care of it because he provided it for us. Super. So that's a, Let's that's a really Let's see another picture and see another group maybe. Uh, what's yeah. this? This is a group. Um, the... This is a Buddhist group in the Bay Area, and they are um, looking at their their big project is trying to save trees. And the way that they're doing that here in is trying to get people to recycle simple things like reusing a bag, a paper bag at the grocery store. But then on a national level, they're trying to um, communicate and dialogue with um, magazine company publishers and trying to get um, publishers like National Geographic to use recycled paper for their magazines and things like that. Speaking of recycling, um, we're having a project at the Newman Center, at St. Paul Newman Center, meets Thursday nights during Lent. It actually was written up nicely in the B. Uh, of course, somebody critiqued saying, shouldn't you do something else during Lent, and why would you do that? Well, why would we do that, actually, is if you look at the big picture, which this group today is doing, things like ecology uh, are right there in the scripture to open up with the book of Genesis, but also it's our tradition and it's our, it's our commitment to survive not only our lifetime, but to care for this planet because others that come after us deserve to inherit it better than we left it, which we're not leaving it, as they say, very well. So this effort of a Buddhist communi community is in sync with a lot of Christian communities, Jewish and Muslim communities, Sikh and Hindu communities that are aware of the limited resources we have and why we need this group, Interfaith Social Justice Collaborative. They've signaled that we have to take our break, believe it or not. We'll be back in one minute and we'll have Susan be able to tell us a little bit about what they've been doing in this group for the last four years. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. KNXE thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXE with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. Well, welcome back to the second part of what's a very important, very exciting and interesting program on the Interfaith Social Justice Collaborative here in Fresno. Uh, we have one guest that hasn't really been able to say very much yet. That's Susan Orowitz. Susan, tell us a little bit about, first of all, let's get your email address up okay. and then let's tell us why we want to be in touch. Okay. And then what about that fair that you just celebrated with some sure. pictures? Okay, great. 
Um, I'd like to invite you all to join the Interface Social Justice Collaborative. Collaborative. It's a very simple thing to do. You just have to send me your email address and I'll put you on a list. There's no money. <laughs> you don't have to do anything except you'll be alerted to everything that we sponsor, everything we co-sponsor, and anything else in town that is interfaith and or social justice. So it really is kind of a central uh, feed for what's happening in town that fits into that category. Um, we don't have any officers, we don't have any dues, it's just a very low key, we just come up with an idea and we pull it off and we like to share it with everybody. Now I'll say two things, is that not only does that email um, listing work, Susan asked me, do you want to be on? I did it like six weeks ago. Every couple of days something very positive comes. Uh, announcements that are very important. I'd say weekly there'll be something, so stay tuned. It's not too many, but it's appropriately enough. Appropriately enough. Secondly, you had a marvelous fair. We did. Tell us about the fair and illustrate it with pictures. Sure. It was the second Interface Social Justice Fair, and we titled it Sowing Seeds of Justice. And the committee made little seed packages that what, Willie Farms donated the oh, seeds. Nice. We had radish seeds, and we gave them out to everybody who came. And it, that was really fun. That was really fun. Um, we had a, a five people on the panel, very diverse group of people. Um, Two women who are in one of those pictures. Let's see. So okay. introduce us to uh, Maria well, this, Telesco. Okay. Well, you just did, and that's great because the ta the table is from the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, the Bread of Life Food Pantry, and two women are on the panel from that church, and um, we also had someone from St. Paul Newman Center on the panel from the Peace and Justice Ministry. We had somebody from the. West Fresno Ministerial Alliance from their social justice department, um, Jonathan Villalobos from Bethany Inner City Church Homeless Drop-In Program, and um, a woman from Faith and Community, which is faith-based, but it's, co it's community organizing. Wonderful so people group. improving community through organizing. What do we see the, here? These are the, this is the fellowship Missionary Baptist Church Bread of Life Food Pantry. Great. And they have um, food that they hand out to homeless people that is ready to eat, and they also have food, that different set of food that they give to people who do have cooking facilities. Great. And these are people who came uh, and are in attendance. We had the panel and we also had the tabling. And this is our, our future social oh, justice yeah, look collaborative. At the kids. We're, we're bringing them up. Oh, that's good, the young kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Steve Sachs. Okay, now introduce us to this wonderful okay. steering committee. Um, that, that is our steering committee. So on the, starting from the far left is Susan Moran, yep. Connie Young, yeah. Laurie Tidyman Jones, Mary Hetherington, Christy Cole, it's myself, Helen, and Katie. Nice. And We're so we've, we've got Wesley, and Steve Ratzloff is missing. Right. Um, we have, and Steve is the... Um, uh, Mennonite Community Men Church. Thank you. Mennonite Community Church. We have uh, the UU. We have Wesley, Temple Beth Israel, um, and St. Paul Newman Center. What and a great collaborative. College. And College Community Congregational Church. Awesome. What a great group. Oh, there's and your so there's the panel. Yeah. Yeah. There's the panel. So there's Bill Simon for sure. And then um, we've introduced them before. And that's Bruce McAllister, who's a pastor. That's right at All Saints Community Church of God in Christ, and Jonathan Villalobos is to his right, Beth and Brianna Urig, who's from Faith and Community, and all the way on the left um, are um, Velma Jenkins and Louise Montgomery from the Be Bread of Life Food Pantry. Mm -hmm. great. It was great. It, they were really, really excellent panelists. Mm -hmm. Is there one more thing that you thought, maybe I'll mention one more of my projects that's um, very sure. important. Then we'll. One thing I want to mention that I have to give Helen credit for because it was Helen's idea. We supported her. Um, Helen came up with Chickens for the Soul, and it was our December project, and it was a food contribution project uh, in collaboration, ISJC in collaboration with the West Fresno Ministerial Alliance awesome. and Foster Farms. And 
504 chickens were purchased, and Foster Farms donated some of the money. Great. Um, we, we, we came up with the rest of the money. Um, I think mostly Helen did, but we all chipped in That's some. That's great. So 2,200 pounds of chickens were sent to West, were taken to West Fresno, and in a parking lot of a church, 11 churches came, picked up uh, food for their communities. It was so exciting. This and, is... it, and that's what I mean. We just, like Helen just had this idea and we just did it. No committees, no 16 years of discussion. Yeah. She t one did... week she said it, the next week we did it. Boy, sounds like God in one week, the whole world. But this is, this is good. <laughs> well, God is helping. No, God is, God is God definitely is, helping. God is working in this group. We can see it. Now, Katie, you get one more chance at least to start telling us one more time about renewal. Okay. Let's post up one more time, Greg, the uh, date and the setting for this wonderful gathering. What's going to happen? Remind us why we want to be there on the 23rd. So I want to say one more thing. Oh, please. Please do. We all watched this movie. Yes, we did. And this is a great movie. I mean, it's very energetic. It's very exciting. So even though it's 90 minutes, it keeps you moving. Good. And, and, and it's just a beautiful film. It was beautiful. It's, it's very well done. It, yeah. It's artistic. Um, just from the pictures you saw, yeah. with, um, this, everything about it is it's inspiring and right. it comes back to people are doing something. Right. They're talking about it, but they're also doing it. And it's simple things like um, recycling a piece of paper or um, teaching a, a child where their food's coming from. Things of that nature that are just, they're in front of us and we can do them in such an easy way. And it's at a beautiful setting at Hope Lutheran Church. Let's see if we can post it one more time, Greg, so that everyone will get their pencils out and know that it's right there, corner of Barstow at Fresno, right down from the Newman Center, right down from College Community Congregational Church, right on the corner. And what's the best thing you can tell us about the website? We didn't mention there's renewalproject.net. What happens at renewalproject.net? You can look at all of the different vignettes, um, all of the different groups that are involved. And also, there's a really neat link, and I forgot the name of the link, but it's what people are doing. From oh, after good. watching the movie, there's n other groups that have, that have started different projects. Super. And you can see what they're Super. doing. So it's something that it does inspire you to say, okay, what, what can we do and how can we you know, awesome. be renewed? Jim, one of the, the, I think the main things about interfaith social justice for, for myself and I think for all of us is we started the group because we all feel, <clears throat> excuse me, overwhelmed at times oh, with yeah. the amount of work that needs to be done in our communities and the number of people who need assistance. And interfaith social justice gives us that kind of support, a, kind of a, a support network so that we can go ahead and do work on these projects and feel that we have people working with us to call at the drop of a hat to get some help to do some good. You know, one thing about interfaith, um, we have the program every week, this forum, but what's really important to appreciate, there's a lot of times different religions will dig in and have their differences over uh, doctrine, and that's mm -hmm. fine. I mean, to think that Buddhists and Catholics and Jews and Muslims, it's really all the same. It is not all the same at all. But what is the same, and where the Pope is going in any addresses that are really positive and making a lot of sense, the thing that inter interfaith dialogue can do is when it takes feet and, and does social justice, because that's something we can do, and we're not having this um, specter over us of not agreeing theologically about who's God and is there a heaven and what about hell and these details or these things that are doctrines don't interfere at all among a group of people that just want to take care of the world as if that's not enough to do. And what's wrong with a little heaven on earth? What's so <laughs> wrong about peace, love and understanding? Um, Katie, another chance to say one more thing about why this group is important and what someone can do to join it or to do something about it. I'm going to be redundant and just say we do things. We talk about something, someone will throw out an idea one week, and we start. We start us and say, okay, when are we going to do this event and how are we going to do it? You're going to do this part, you're going to do this part, cool. and we do it. And I think that that's what's so great is because I've only been a member since January, and I've already been involved with three different events. Awesome. I mean, so awesome. It's, it's exciting, and it feels good to actually be a part of something that is doing something. So they're going to reach you, Susan, by the, the email. Absolutely. The email address will put you in touch with Susan. So maybe one more time, Greg, if you can put that, that email address, 
to reach Susan, and then Susan will then be in touch. Now, do you have a meeting upcoming that you, you have to have meetings once in a while? Um, you know, every, we're going to have every three months, we're going to have an open meeting for wow. anybody who wants to come uh, to share what's happening in their community or to even to just hear what's happening in other communities. Because what we're hoping is that each faith-based community will start having social justice yeah. groups if they don't already. Exactly. And maybe sometimes people don't even understand what that means. And then, and then, you know, hearing what different people do, I mean, from recycling to um, just all the things that we've mentioned, there's a lot of different kinds of things that you can do. Start a community garden, you know, all Collecting kinds of things. Collecting sleeping bags. Right, and... right. Now, Helen, up at the UU Church, you already have this phenomenal Emmy, well, they're not Emmy Award winning because they're not on TV, but critically acclaimed social justice committee. They mm -hmm. do awesome things up at the UU Church. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens is they'll have their local group at the church, mm -hmm. but then there's ways that you and others from the UU Church, like Connie Young, connect to a bigger umbrella, right? Correct. This is what's mm -hmm. so great. You could be doing these projects at your local community, whatever it be, and then you'll come to this. Or you may have no other connection much, but this is your group now. This is your home. This is your family. Katie, one last thought before we say adios. Here's my quote. The hardest thing about taking action is sometimes just taking the first step. So take the step and at least get on the email list and see what we're doing, and maybe you'll want to be a part of it. You will want to be a part. Um, Susan, another time now, you know, one more plea. What's your last plea to these people? Come on down. So come watch the movie. Really, it's a great movie, and you can bring your kids. It's a lovely movie. Uh, so come watch the Renewal movie. Email me. I'll send you information about what the Interface Social Justice Collaborative is. And, you know, if you don't like it, you can always email me back and say, take me off the list. Oh, but you will not want to do that. I mean, you won't need to do that. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be wanting to stay on because it's very, they're very succinct messages. They're very timely, and they're very useful. And no more than one a day. Oh, hardly. It's my rule. Oh, yeah, because we have rules here, and we keep them. We are so glad to have this wonderful panel with Helen, Katie, and Susan. We hope you'll be back next week because we're going to learn about interfaith prayer and why the style of Taizé prayer is the perfect way to do the things we need to do for each other. God bless. <laughs>